I'm Anders Johnson, uh, the chairman of Plan B Solutions. And uh, as your host today, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the inaugural uh, SharePoint Leadership Forum. Like many of you, Bamboo has spent the past 10 years dedicated working with and extending the native capabilities of Microsoft SharePoint platform. Having worked with thousands of customers worldwide, the Bamboo management team paused at the beginning of 2012 to collect our thoughts and to consider how to better serve as a thought leader in the SharePoint community. A number of important observations came out of this analysis, together with a belief that we should host a leadership forum event in the DC area. We decided to assemble a group of compelling speakers who are recognized around the globe as the SharePoint thought leaders in key business area and to create a forum for discussion between those experts and all of you that have gathered here today. Over the next hours, you will hear timely and informative presentations covering a variety of diverse topics, including Office 15, SharePoint mobility, social media, project management, SharePoint maturity, and the notion of build versus buy regarding SharePoint functionality. And from our keynote speaker, Dan Holm, you will hear about his real-world experience running SharePoint deployments in support of the Olympics and um, uh, Olympic Games in London. Our theme today is collaboration, and by bringing together this group of notable speakers, uh, we aim to underscore the importance of collaboration. We also recognize the importance and the presence of a SharePoint journey, a common path that exists between all organizations uh, that choose SharePoint as their platform uh, for online collaboration. No matter where on the SharePoint journey a given organization is, we will learn that that trip will be fast and exciting. With the imminent release of Office and SharePoint 2013, we at Bamboo have rededicated ourselves to an ideal that we call the Bamboo Way. It's an ideal that describes the commitment of our company and partners to help guide organizations safely, successfully, and profitably along the SharePoint journey. The SharePoint experts you will hear from today all represent different interests. What they share in common is that they are all trusted partners of Bamboo. And they, as well as we, firmly believe that SharePoint is the finest enterprise platform available for collab collaboration and content management. We hope to reinforce this belief in all of you today and to provide you with a variety of thought-provoking approaches for collaboration using SharePoint. Thank you. And let me introduce the first speaker. Um, he is the founder of SharePoint Experts, where he continues to build on the work he began as the former vi Vice President of Sales at Bamboo Solutions. A strong advocate for delivering sustainable enterprise solutions on SharePoint, he specializes in assisting customers with the design and delivery of solutions. Here today to address the enduring question of build versus buy is Rob Manfredi. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good morning. This is a beautiful building. I've never been here on this side of Sequoias. I've been on that side of Sequoia. <laughs> so uh, welcome, and thank you, Bamboo, for hosting this event. It's amazing. I see a lot of familiar faces out there. Um, over the past three years, uh, working with Bamboo and large enterprises to deploy solutions on SharePoint, this age-old question always comes up, build versus buy. You could apply it to any sort of technology or any hobby, be that as it may, but we're going to try to address some of the issues that I've learned and have seen over time on when we should build versus when we should buy and how we should approach enterprise solutions on SharePoint. So I'm going to click each way. Perfect. So I love this quote from Philip Zimbardo. Time is one of the most powerful influences on our thoughts, feelings, and actions. Yet, we are usually totally unaware of its passage, right? Days go by, weeks go by, months go by, that project was started, do we ever finish it? However, demands are being made, and this is when we begin to feel time 
and its uh, pressures that it brings on us. So what are the pressures that we feel in a collaborative environment? Well, SharePoint or a collaborative system must become accessible throughout your enterprise. We want every desktop to have access to SharePoint and its portals. These legacy applications that were servicing the needs of each of our business units, that functionality must be ported onto SharePoint without any loss of data or any loss in productivity. The data not only needs to be accessible, but it has to be reliable. So we get into the dashboarding concept. And business processes that serve the, our frontline workers need to be automated. It's a lot to swallow. We're all starting with SharePoint. We're all on this journey. We look at how do we recreate that functionality? How do we provide what our stakeholders are looking for on this platform? Do we build it, or do we buy it, or we do a little mixture of both, right? So the challenges we face as organizations deploying this collaborative solution um, with the fundamental tenet that collaboration is going to make us a more competitive organization, right? I mean, you almost have to step one step back and say, why are we doing this, right? You know, we can think of SharePoint as the glue that connects our workers together from an information and sharing, right? But do we need that? What does that do for us as an organization? Um, and if we believe that workers that work together sh and sharing best practices and information make our uh, company or organization more competitive and more efficient, then this begins to make sense. And that's the question of where you are with a journey, right? So you start off with just bringing people together and ideas. You move to automating some business tasks to our critical business processes are now in a collaborative environment. And that's really all we mean by the journey. Wh where are you in the collaborative space? Um, when you're in the beginning, it's very simple. It makes sense. When you're in the middle, it gets a little more confusing. When you begin turning off your legacy content management solutions, importing all of that functionality that runs your business into a collaborative environment like SharePoint, then it really gets complicated. So that, that's what we're talking about here. So the challenges we face in this experience is how do we deliver an experience that our users are used to with legacy applications on SharePoint? It's got to be visually rich. It's got to be easy to use. It's got to be fast. right? It's got to be accessible. Um, how do you build these applications without creating the same problems we've done in the past with CRM systems, quality systems, risk systems, where we're stovepiping data and functionality for one organization? Right? We don't want to recreate the same traps that we did before with uh, 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 smaller systems. And if a problem has already been solved, let's say a quality system, we don't want to rethink how you do that. We just simply want that functionality to now exist in a new platform. And we need to do it on this new complex platform that gives us the efficiencies of a common UI, a common database, common security, a common platform for managing these applications, right? So that was always the issue with these, these smaller business unit applications is I would stand up a documentum system and I'd have a whole new set of servers, a whole new UI, a whole new way of developing workflows, a whole new security scheme that would tie into Active Directory. And then I would stand up my CRM system and I'd have a whole new UI, a whole new, right? We'd push all this data out. So how do we do all of those systems on a common platform or an operating system for our enterprise that we're calling SharePoint? And that's the fundamental question of build versus buy um, and the challenges we face. So what we proposed, um, and I have to say, after three years at Bamboo, my presentation might be a little skewed towards buying. But uh, <laughs> the arguments that we would make with our customers is that the development paradigm for applications on an operating system like SharePoint, right? let's just call it that, is you need to insert a level of off-the-shelf functionality in between the base functionality of SharePoint and the configuration required to make it do what you need it to do for your organization, right? And we're calling that layer, let's, we'll call it a, a framework solution, right? It's not a complete solution. It's not something you buy off the shelf, plug in, and it plays. But it is a set of functionality or components that allow you to do things faster that your stakeholders are requesting, right? So if you look at, whoops. Here we are. Um, the reusable layer of functionality between it is what we're calling a framework solution. So on the right, you've got SharePoint and custom development. On the left, we've got SharePoint, a reusable layer of components that um, 
that um, are purchased that add the functionality you need to quickly, rapidly prototype applications that your stakeholders are looking at. So it, it is a mixture of both, right? So when we look at um, solution, or organizations that are creating solutions on SharePoint, we must think of this framework as a critical part of the development process. Because what you're able to do with off-the-shelf components, whether they're things for mobility, things for managing projects, or things to just to provide a richer experience, is that you can do two things. You can develop in a more collaborative environment with your stakeholders. That is, you can rapidly show them what the applications will look like, allow them to put their hands on it and give you feedback, and you can provide a much richer experience faster using off-the-shelf components than trying to do it all custom, right? So just like collaboration helps us work smarter, developing in a more collaborative environment with your stakeholders provide a much better solution that's more rapidly adopted by those users uh, once it's finally deployed. So the idea of a framework is very much like a modular home, right? So these components um, that you create are things like web parts, things like mobile ac accessibility, things like uh, task managers, things like uh, a project management solution. These are functional items that you can plug into a SharePoint, uh, into a, uh, uh, a site collection, configure them together, and rapidly begin displaying data, providing information, or providing automation quickly. The other thing is the automation part, right? So whether you're using SharePoint Designer, whether you're using Nintex, whether you're using Bamboo for Workflow, you need to begin automating the process of uh, changing data, presenting data, notifications, uh, moving things around within a list to make sure that um, uh, tasks are being uh, addressed and dealt with in a timely fashion. And then you take the other component, which are application development or solution accelerators, we call them. And that is pre-configured groups of components that do things, right? So we uh, at Bamboo have a great solution accelerator called um, the Knowledge Base Solution Accelerator, KBSA. And it, it provides all the framework of seven or eight components already configured to be a knowledge base, right? It's not a complete solution, but it gets you 80% of the way there. And you can take that chunk of group functionality and drop it into a site collection and provide knowledge-based functionality to a case management system, to a document tracking system, or things like that. And then the other is community support. And that's where SharePoint, I think, really excels. While we're a collaborative solution, the actual community itself of SharePoint is collaborative. And we'll hear from Mark Miller today and other where the social side of uh, SharePoint users, administrators, share best practices open and freely on many discussion boards and sites, and the answers are out there, right? Let's not recreate the wheel um, and the like. So when we talk about components, these are all commercially tested products, not custom code. There is a difference between a commercially developed product on SharePoint, a web part, and something you develop custom. While often I hear I can develop a web part cheaper, that's only 20% of the battle. Right? It's making sure it's forward compatible. It's making sure that your configurations and data move to the next version of SharePoint. Is it supportable? Is it deployable? Does it work on all site collections? Can you move it around? Does it have all the configurations you're going to need? Is that code something that's supportable in the future? Right? A lot of times when you develop a custom web part, the architecture of that component is very specific to the developer that developed it. Right? And the rigor around documenting for maintenance and extensibility of the functionality of that web part goes out the door when somebody leaves. And SharePoint developers never leave, right? Nobody wants to hire them away. And you can just get another one. <laughs> Come right in. Believe me, now I'm in the consulting business, you can't do that. Um, so that's what we talk about in terms of reusable components, right? And, and, and what we, f we focus on. When we think about components, they really do fall into these three categories, right? Again, around these framework solutions. We've got applications. Applications we get, but in SharePoint, an application, oh, I'm sorry. Please, thank you. Your job is to make sure I do this. So when we talk about applications, what we're talking about now, I can't see what's going on. Um, we talk about applications. So Nintex is an application. Um, PM Central is an application. Brightworks is an application, right? When we think about web parts, we think about individual pieces of functionality that add to the experience. A calendar web part, an alert web part, a list roll-up web part. We can even think of mobility as a piece of functionality that gives you access to pieces of data, right? It's not really a solution in itself, but it enhances a solution. And the last, of course, is solution accelerators, which are really a combination of solutions 
and, or applications and web parts that are already pre-configured and best practices to provide a specific piece of functionality. So what you can see us building is a library of tools that you as a, a receiver of requests from a stakeholder can rapidly assemble in a site collection in your test environment, in your sandbox, to stop that guy from yelling at you on the phone, right? So that they can then log into a site and say, wow, that's really close. What I really meant to say <laughs> is I want it to look like this. And you haven't wasted a bunch of time in the traditional development environment of spending all your time up front to develop what they think they need and then going through iteration after iteration to develop uh, what they actually need. So truly, we get some 1 plus 1 equals 3 functionality there. OK, so let's take a look at an example of a solution that we all would want to have on um, SharePoint. And we'll categorize it as case management. So case management, as you know, is a generic term, I think, for almost every application out there. Within case management, whether it's a help desk app, whether it's a CRM app, whether it is a contract review process, there is some instantiating event, right? There is a web request, there's a phone call, there's an email, there's something that happens that creates an object that needs to be managed, which we call a case, right? That case then gets logged. Data about what that case is about may need to be gathered from internal systems, like if it's a customer request, you may have to get who the customer is, what's their products that they have, what's their support contract, if it's a contractor request. So you get the idea. We need to, to, to gather information. Now that information then needs to be presented to a knowledge worker, right? That knowledge worker that you choose is probably dependent on the type of case, right? There's so people have um, you know, maintenance renewal requests go to this person, new customer requests go to that person, or you know, contract requests go to this other person. So you know, the assignability is variable. And then, of course, the case gets worked. Notifications go back to the requester. It gets closed. The information with what you do with how that case was closed may need to go into a knowledge base to help serve your front end um, self-service so that question doesn't come in again, or maybe share just within your knowledge workers so that there's consistency around how we're answering these questions. That process, case management, can be applied to almost anything your stakeholders are requesting. It always boils down to those three or four steps. So if you take a look at components that you could begin to assemble and then configure to serve those requests, even the names alone of these components begin to build the framework of the solution, right? We've got workflow conductor or Nintex workflow or what have you. We're going to have to move this case around and assign it to people. Alerts Plus and Alerts Manager. We're going to need notification back to people that there is a case that's open. We're going to need to escalate that case if time goes by that it hasn't been addressed or we're not meeting our performance needs. <clears throat> List Rollup. We're going to need to pull data from many different sources and aggregate it and present it to a knowledge worker so that they can work on a case. A Knowledge Based Solution Accelerator. We talked about that earlier where we're going to need to take the information and either see if this question has already been answered before, and I can just reuse that answer, or submit a request that a new article be written or a new uh, 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 piece of information get shared within our organization, and on down the line. Each of those web parts are things that you could build yourself, right? But why do that, right? With SharePoint, we get the ability to scour all of these great providers of components that allow me to assemble these things together and address the needs of our stakeholders rapidly. So great examples of casework, claims management, um, employee onboarding, legal matter management, contracts management. The trick in a collaborative environment is to not to think of these things as stove-piped applications, but to think of it as different views into the same data source, the same collaborative environment, but simply configuring functionality so that SharePoint can do these things for your different stakeholders. And that is the true revolution of what SharePoint's doing in corporate America. Um, I come from a legacy content management background. I sold Documentum, an application extender for EMC. And we would go in department by department, accounts payable for you know, processing invoices, and sell them 20 user seats right, with workflow on application extender and stand-up servers and build this whole world for this one department within a corporation. You know, three years later, you look, they've got 
you know, 8 million records, they've got them all indexed, they've got this workflow process going on using all this software, but you could not leverage any of that functionality or that data into Department B. It was completely stovepiped and finished. And, and that's the way we used to work. With SharePoint, we've now got a new model for collaboration that makes a lot of sense. And since we're reusing all of our security, all of our environment, all of our UI, the cost savings are tremendous. Um, if we layer in the ability to get 80% of the way there with these framework components in a buy situation, we're going to decrease how we access data. We're going to decrease the amount of time it takes to develop the process automations. We're going to quickly be able to build dashboards and reports that uh, executive management needs. And um, we're going to be able to deploy these applications a lot faster since the infrastructure is already there. And if we look at a typical development cycle of, let's say, six to eight months for an application, we're seeing almost a 50 or 60 percent reduction in time. But more importantly, we're seeing an immediate response to a stakeholder with an application that they can put their hands on so that we get feedback in this collaborative process. And it, it's not the black hole of development that we're traditionally used to. So there are several truths in closing that we want to take a look at related to SharePoint that we're facing. And I'll have to crank my head a little bit. So SharePoint is no longer a nice to have file share. It is becoming a critical part of our application, which means um, applications that we rely to run our business on are being moved to SharePoint. SharePoint is not simply .NET. It's a whole new skill set and a whole new way to think about developing those applications. Control is becoming centralized. So where it was a development environment, the CIO is now taking control of SharePoint, putting governance around it, and putting structure around how we are developing and deploying functionality to our stakeholders, which means that it is gaining a lot of visibility all the way through senior management. It is not a free product. It is not a low-cost product. It is not something that is just a, uh, a test or a laboratory experiment anymore. And <clears throat> Developers must face this make or buy decision when looking at what the stakeholders are requesting. And all of this um, gives us an opportunity to use SharePoint to deliver functionality in a new and exciting way um, to make our teams more collaborative and more efficient and more effective. And I think that's it. So thank you very much. I hope that was informative for you all.